the purpose of these little chats on a Monday morning, you know, don't know how many I'll get, but it, it doesn't matter. It's about showing up. And I want to show you that I've learned over the last few years the importance of showing up to every day, that it's not just something you do for a little while. It's something that you need to commit to doing every single day. Um, and I want to kind of share what I do every morning. I'm not saying that's what you should do. Those of you who've worked with me know that my job is never to tell you what to do. My job is to show you what you can't see and help you step into what you want to do for you. Knowing, I think, that it's never gonna be the easy path, but it is the rewarding and the enriching path. But we have to get over the fact that we probably don't wanna do it, it feels hard, it feels sort of difficult but it's actually going to bring us the rewards at the end of the day. So I want to talk about transition times or transitions, times when things don't go the way you want them to do in life, which, you know, you can kind of see uh, the older you get that that's probably most of the time. But we get in these routines of what and, you know, what matters to us. So for me, you know, training, um, you know, my little cold plunges, doing you know, work and obviously my kids, you know, doing things, um, daily that towards the things that that matter is important to me towards the end of last week of course my kids came home with lovely gastro that kind of knocked out the whole family and then um, you know we had um, got colds as you can hear I've got a bit of a cold the hot weather you know I haven't really actually gotten to do any of those things for the the last you know five or six days so it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think these things happen and, you know, it's op they're opportunities to remember that, um, you know, life will happen in the way it does. It's not personal. It's just how it is. Um, and we can fight with that or we can relax into that. And, you know, for me, what matters um, in terms of my health and my, you know, really working towards <clears throat> being strong in my old age and continuing to remain healthy is what I do consistency, consistently. And having, you know, this happen, it's not gonna affect that. Yes, my mind, you know, your mind jumps to, oh, you know, I've done all this, I was really into it and I was getting really strong and everything was, yeah, of course it was, but then, you know, life happens and it throws you off. And I think just remembering, you know, the bigger picture is really important when those things happen. So, you know, my kids and my family, they were always, come first they are always what matters most to me and um, that's my priority and these things tend to remind me of that and also just to release the the fact that yeah we are controlling a lot of things we're controlling the way we react to things we're controlling the, the, a lot of the things we choose in each day but at the end of the day we're also not and releasing uh, that can be pretty cool too. to share with you a little bit a little bit of perspective around the post i did yet over the weekend so i shared a picture of me in a bikini and talked about how over the years i've actually finally seen through the illusion of you know not loving myself for want of a better word you know and i really wanted to put a little bit of perspective around that because it, it is actually really important um and a lot of the time we sit in a real deep um, dislike for who we are, for our body, for, for what it is. And we don't really understand the consequences of that. There are, there are consequences of that that are important for health. Plus it's, you know, it is sad. You know, I have had clients in their 60s who have never found peace with their body. And I, I think that's very sad. And I don't think that's in any way a fault of us you know we, we live in this environment that is just not suited um, to the human to the human condition um, and of course you know we've been you know fed a whole lot of lies in terms of what to eat and our bodies have become unwell and insulin resistant and to do is we have our our nose squished up on the uh, the window trying to see trying to see what we need to see and I was on the train the other day and I just saw this kid you know he's just sitting with his nose right up on the window and reminded me of this you know that's what we tend to do when we're trying to see and understand our own experience but what I do as a coach is, is I pull people back so that we get much more of a perspective and instead of really just focusing on what is our experience what's my experience we focus on 
actually true for human beings. And all of us have a mind that is never going to tell us that we're good enough. And that is just a function of how we evolve. You know, it's so important that we remained as part of the tribe. And all those traits were passed on for the people that did survive because they had safety numbers. Um, and that looked like, am I fitting in? Am I good enough? Now, while that's actually a normal function of the brain, it's only enhanced by the fact that I'm playing into it and I'm focusing on that. And actually, what's happening is that is being taken into myself. My cells are listening. So your cells, every cell in your body is listening to the thinking that you're doing. So thought is universal energy passing through us in the light clouds. We get to choose what we want to take, but what we actually, you know, most of us don't really understand that. And we tend to just build up this repetitive habitual thought patterns that we focus on. And a lot of that is around how we feel about ourselves. So when we talk about self-love, it's like for some of us so far away, I can't possibly love myself. And then there's also that misunderstanding that if we love it, if I love myself, I'm giving up. This is not giving up. This is the opposite of giving up. And it's an illusion that we think we have to be hard on ourselves and continually berate ourselves. Otherwise, we will give up. Well, don't search for suddenly, oh, look, I can't. I've got to feel love. Well, you're not going to feel love first. It's not going to happen first. You are going to instead look to start acting in loving ways towards yourself. And the feeling will come along with that over time. It's definitely how it looked to me. So one of my values is kindness. Well, any value that you have has to start primarily with how you treat yourself. So I can't be, I can't be truly acting in alignment with my value of kindness if I'm only kind to others and I'm horrible to myself.